Hi, I'm Chris Rowan. I'm the CTO for the IP group of Cadence, and I'm here to talk with you about using processor clusters to implement neural networks. Of course, when you're working on neural networks, you want to achieve high accuracy rates at high frame rates so that you can process large amounts of data and get important results from the recognition system. But how do you do that if the problem is bigger than what can be handled in a single processor? You start using clusters. You start using groups of processors which are coordinated to do the task. So let's think a little bit first about the set of tasks you need to do and then about how you might use those processors. Well, the first simple idea is that, in fact, there is both vision pre-processing and the neural network. And one simple way of partitioning the work is to say, well, I'm going to run the vision pre-processing on one processor, and I'll run the neural network on another. And typically, there will be some local memory associated with each processor, but they also are going to share a bus, maybe an AXI bus. And as the pre-processing is finished here, then that data is moved, perhaps by a DMA engine, directly into the memory here so that this neural network processor can do the work. In fact, they may be exactly the same kind of hardware, the same exact processor, but just different software, one optimized for the pre-processing task, one for the neural network processing task. But you may have even higher throughput requirements, and so you may want to have additional processors that are doing work. And since the neural network processing task is often the most computationally intensive, you may in fact want to have more neural network uh, processing functions running. And so the question then becomes, how am I going to take the neural network and spread its work across multiple processors. And there are really three basic ways at which you might do that. One is you could say, oh, well, I'm going to be working on relatively big images, and I'm just going to split my image up into part one, part two, part three, and I'm going to map those three subsections of the image onto different physical processors, and they will do their work at least up to the point at which you are now consolidating the, for the final results. And then you'll move that final pass onto just one of those processors for its final processing step. But you get a great deal of parallelism among these processors. The second thing you might do is you might say, well, I'm going to run certain layers of my task on each of the processors. So I'll do pre-processing here. I might do layers one and two here, layers three and four here, and layers five, six, seven, and eight there. And the data, that is the maps, the intermediate computation, then flow over this bus, typically driven by the DMA channels, from one core to the next. Again, using exactly the same physical structure with a general purpose high-speed bus, but again, finding maximum parallelism across those processors. The third thing you might do is recognize that at each layer, you are doing a set of computations that use input layers and create output layers. And in fact, the computation of the different output layers are independent of one another. So that you can take the same input and implement the feature maps, some on processor 1, some on processor 2, some on processor 3, and thereby get more parallelism. So there are lots of ways to split up this computation. And what it says to us is that it's important to give the application developer lots of choices about the structure of it, to provide powerful software environments that allow them to rapidly explore and select, 
and powerful mechanisms for data sharing and communication coordination with high-speed bus interfaces and DMA channels so that you can achieve high performance using any one of those techniques or in fact a mix of them. And by having a quite powerful general purpose engine, you can get the most out of the available hardware. So for example, if this vision pre-processing step doesn't require all of the compute performance of this engine, you can even run the uh, neural network code on that core as well, so that you maximize the throughput relative to the amount of hardware. And that means highest throughput, lowest energy, and lowest cost by using clusters to implement neural networks. So thanks, and I look forward to seeing you again on another Whiteboard Wednesday.